Well, for more on the World Cup and its impact on the Chinese economy, we're joined by David New, live from Philadelphia. He's the president of AFL Global and the China Arena Football League. Welcome, David. Uh, hello, Rochelle. How are you? Nice to be here. Good, thank you. So let's start by looking at the number, the rise in the number of official FIFA sponsors from China. How is that significant? Yeah, it's very significant, isn't it? I think it's the magic of the World Cup. You know, you look at the world's, you know, major sporting events. You've got the Olympics and then you have the Soccer World Cup that sit right up there as, as the major ones. And the opportunity for China to be a, a participant in the World Cup in, 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 in a way that it can't be as an actual team player or a nation being involved. I think as a business, it's a tremendous opportunity. You look at the numbers, there's three and a half billion people who are going to tune in to the Soccer World Cup across 200 countries. Uh, China's now going to generate probably a third of the uh, overall advertising revenue of about two and a half billion dollars. So I think it's an eye on the future. It says that there's probably an opportunity for China to host a World Cup based on those numbers, based on population, based on geography. And it's an exciting opportunity, and I think they're going to grasp it uh, both from an economic standpoint, as they're doing now with sponsors and advertisers, but also from a participant base. I think it's going to be an exciting game for Chinese uh, athletes for years to come. So let's take a look at some of the companies involved. You have dairy giant Meng Yu, who seems to be focused more on China's domestic companies. You also have Wanda expanding its global sports reach. Hisense and Vivo want to boost their global recognition. How likely is World Cup advertising to have the desired effect that they're looking for? Oh, I think it's going to have a tremendous effect. You know, you look at what the Soccer World Cup does in terms of attracting people who are disproportionately uh, not connected with television at the moment. You know, young upmarket uh, mobile consumers, you know, people of a younger age, a younger generation in the Chinese community is, you know, 1.4 billion people, 700 million of those live in urban areas, 550 million of those are between the ages of 15 and 54, you know, and, and many, many, many of those, a proportionate number of those are interested in sports. So there's a great connection there. There's, there's a, a direct link between these companies being engaged in this World Cup. Uh, and looking at their consumer base and a strategic plan towards how they might be able to build their brand and their business and grow that over time, both domestically and internationally. I think you look at the, uh, the yogurt company, Meng Yu, uh, they're using Lionel Messi as their, their brand ambassador and he connects directly with that young consumer market in terms of the soccer space. Uh, they're active in that role. You know, Dalian, well, well, sorry, Wanda Group is looking at, at this as an opportunity across their platforms from you know, uh, commercial property and into the cinemas. So I think there's a direct connection and a correlation between sport, entertainment and these businesses most definitely. Now, we know that the internet and mobile technology has really revolutionized the way that advertisers are able to reach people. So what are some of the more innovative ways that Chinese advertisers can really engage with fans and consumers during the World Cup? Well, I think it's immediate. You know, you look at from our experience when I was involved in the development of American football in China and now the business that I'm involved in in rugby with our interests back into China, uh, both now and into the future, that's the audience, that's the marketplace. You, you know, everybody is connected to their mobile device. Their information is instant. We can have highlight packages, so there's engagement and entertainment, which are, you know, they fit hand in glove with sports and sports business. So, uh, you know, for the, for the vivos of the world and the high sense, it's just a great fit. And if you look at the Soccer World Cup, as I mentioned in your opening, you look at the data that you shared about people who are traveling to and from, we're all connected by our mobile device. These platforms are perfect opportunities for content to be displayed and distributed in so many different ways that we didn't know 10, 15, 20 years ago and that China's embracing now and, and, and that sports is a wonderful platform for. And David, just quickly looking to the future, we know that President Xi Jinping said he wants China to win a World Cup and become a real football powerhouse. So how does growing China's presence in the World Cup advertising space really help that exposure or further that goal? Oh, I think it's, it, there's a direct connection in the fact that you're now having these young players. You know, we think about athletes, and, and you know, I've been involved in that space, in the sports space, for a long time. And it's about inspiration and aspiration. So they're inspired by the heroes that they'll see, and, and, and they'll aspire to try and accomplish some of those goals as well. If you look at the Chinese Soccer League, whilst there's no Chinese soccer players playing in this tournament, there's eight players from the CSL who will be represented in the Soccer World Cup. So there's a direct connection of those fans and back into those cities and then into the, into the smaller communities where soccer's growing and, it, and it's going to be a bigger part of younger Chinese lives for, for years to come. All right, thank you so much. David New, their president of AFL Global.